So a quick recap of the SL, which gives you a good overview. So electrophilic, that's something that is attracted to electrons, loves electrons, if you will. And that's going to be something probably positive. Substitution is just another way of saying swapping. And benzene, well, benzene is C6H6, and it is unreactive. It's possible under normal circumstances to swap out a hydrogen, or even all the hydrogens, but you're unlikely to break that ring. The ring is stabilized by this central delocalized electrons, single double, single double, single double bonds from carbon to carbon. So here's the equation. Nitric acid plus benzene gives you nitrobenzene and water. You need to know the catalyst for SL is sulfuric acid and you need to know that all acids are concentrated. So the nitric acid and the sulfuric acids are concentrated. So that will do for the SL. Let's move on to the HL then. So let's look at how uh, you can make the electrophile first of all. Well, you've got your nitric acid and your sulfuric acid. Now, you wouldn't really think that two acids could react together, especially two strong acids, uh, but they do. The sulfuric acid is a stronger acid than the nitric acid, so it transfers a proton. This is a Bronsted-Lowry acid, because after all, it's moved one proton from here and put it over there. Which means that this must be a Bronsted-Lowry base. It's receiving a proton. Giving this as the conjugate acid. Conjugate acid is made by adding a proton, and that's the conjugate base. Now, of course, in IB, you couldn't use these abbreviations. You'd have to write them out in full. We're not quite there, though, because then this H2NO3 plus is going to dissociate into water and NO2 plus. And it's this NO2 plus that is the electrophile, the thing that likes electrons. It's called the nitrile ion. Or you could also call it the nitronium ion. Alrighty, we've got our electrophile. So, step two in the mechanism. Benzene is going to react with the nitrile ion. I'm going to draw one of the six hydrogens on the benzene. You'll see why in a second. Now, the mechanism the IB wants you to explain, and they've asked you to do the entire thing, uh, top to bottom, is uh, going to be using what's called curly arrows. So the curly arrow that I've just drawn shows the movement of two electrons from the central ring towards that NO2 plus ion. A curly arrow like this is the movement of one electron, and a curly arrow like that is the movement of two electrons. So what? have we now made? Well, we've got the benzene ring, but this time the, the pi electrons have been disrupted. So I'm going to draw a dotty circle to show that and put a plus in the middle. The hydrogen's still there, and now my NO2 plus has just turned to NO2. Onwards from that part of the mechanism, the two electrons here, where the hydrogen is, are now going to be put back where they were missing from, leaving the H plus iron and nitrobenzene, which is what we're trying to make. Now the sulfuric acid was a catalyst, so what happens is the H plus that came off of the benzene ring is going to react with HSO4 minus that came out of the first step in the mechanism. and regenerate the sulfuric acid. The catalyst is not used up in the process. And we're done.
Well, not quite. What do you have to know? Well, the IB syllabus says deduce, but you actually have to know everything here. It was five points for this entire page of work that we've done here, and you're given about seven or eight minutes to do it. You can also add, using the same method, a nitro group to toluene to make nitrotoluene. And you can carry on and make dinitrotoluene and then add one more nitro group to make trinitrotoluene, TNT. But most times when people try to make an explosive, they only make it once. Lead loss detected.